last week we talked about John chapter 17, man. And Jesus was praying for his disciples. He prayed for himself. He over he overcame the world. You know, we're looking at now the end, the end now where Jesus is gonna get arrested in chapter 18. And it's radical because Jesus, all he wanted was the glory. And he deserves the glory. Listen, man, the Greek term for glory is to make glorious. And it was John's favorite expressions concerning what would happen to Jesus at the result of his crucifixion. And guess what? Don't forget, church, believers, and his resurrection. Because the resurrection is what is what brought a lot of non-believers together, man. And Jesus came, he died, and he rose again. And these events showed the world that Jesus was no ordinary man the resurrection especially would show that he was the glorious son of God, worthy of all honor. In his final hour, Jesus asked his father to be glorified along, alongside of him. That's the three in one. And that's, listen, that's in the father's presence, meaning of the glory he had with his father before the world existed. Remember Genesis where it talked about that. God talked about, and, and Jesus was already in God, Elohim, and God made man in our image. But in, in, in other words, basically Jesus was praying to enter the, to the pristine state of co-equal glory with the Father, a position that he possesses from eternity as God's only son. And listen to this. He entered that glory in a new way. And, and God, God was crucified. Jesus died for us and he was risen again. And this is the most amazing thing that we have. We're getting into this chapter. John chapter 18 is radical, man. You know, we're going to get into this. But, you know, the last 17 chapters, it just, it was, it was radical. We talked about the true vine, man. We talked about the work of the Holy Spirit, man. We talked about everything. You guys just go back and click verse by verse on these messages. Welcome to Growing in His Word. I'm Joseph. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in today. We're going to be talking about, on this podcast, we're going to be talking about John chapter 18, man. And Jesus, last week, prayed for his disciples, and we're going to pray it out. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you, Father. We pray that you come, Father. Lord, just work in this, man. Work, Lord, work miracles as you speak through me, Father. But let you be glorified, Lord. Lord, we're living in the times, Father, and we know it's getting close. So, Father, use me for your glory in your name, Jesus. Amen. Welcome back to Growing in His Word, man. I'm 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 Joseph, and wow, man, last week was radical, man. I I've, I've been working like crazy, man. Man, hours, eight hours a day. My boss has been riding me, but who cares? I keep sharing God's, you know, word with her on the side, and and that's been pretty radical. God bless you guys, man. It's it's an honor to just preach God's word, man, and just to 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 preach verse by verse, chapter by chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna go through the Bible. We're going through the whole Bible, man. So hold on to your seats, man. This is it, man. <laughs> Jesus is gonna be arrested. He's betrayed and arrested, and it's gonna be a, a sight to see. You know, he's in, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and, 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 and I was sitting there one day under the tree before they blocked it off in Israel, and my buddy was with me, and he's like, eh, what are you doing, man? I just, I just want to sit under this tree, man. It's an old tree, and the tree is real. This tree in the garden is real. It's by the church, man. And if, if you guys come to Israel, you're going to see that the tree, well, don't come during the COVID-19 virus, because they're not going to let you in, but... When it's over, man, <laughs> you got to come to this tree, man, and just check out where Jesus was was kicking back under the under the tree, man, of the Garden of Gethsemane before. But I want to read this to you, man. It says, when Jesus, in chapter 18, when Jesus had spoken these words, remember last week, we talked about Jesus praying for his disciples, and he said in the last verses on, on 17, where he said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. Because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify, he said. Listen, sanctify them by your truth. And listen, God's going to sanctify you guys, man. Listen, by 
Your word is the truth, he says in verse 17 of chapter 17. As you sent me, verse 18, into the world, I also sent them into the world. Listen, he sent us into the world to be the light. Believers, listen. I don't even know if we're going to get to chapter 18 now. (laughs) I'm so excited. But Jesus knew you before the foundations of the world. And listen, and it says in verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Verse 19 says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth. Look, look, he's not being selfish. He says in verse 20, I don't pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Look, people want you to, Jesus wants you to get out there. He wants you to take his word to people who don't know Jesus. Listen, he made you for a reason, for a season. Please, grab your seatbelt, snap it on, man. We're going to go on a roller coaster ride. Look at Jesus Christ has called you he's anointed you he wants you to get out there and be the light share the gospel he's saying look i'm praying for you i want you to be i want you to carry on the message this is the message through generation through generation until jesus comes back or we see him listen church believers podcast listeners everyone's going to bow Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is the Lord and Savior. So we might as well just get ready now. We need to get ready. It's not about being a rock star or a rap star. It's not being about, it's not about us. We need to get ourselves off of us. Church, listen, the sheep are scattered because a lot of shepherds, they don't really know what they're doing. They want to be pastors, but they're not really called. And sadly, this is what's going on now. But that's not the problem today. The problem is, where is the love that Jesus wants us to have for one another? Believers, this is what it's about. Jesus wants us to have love for one another. He's given us power through the Holy Spirit to continue His message. And the message is this. Listen, and and I'm going to skip through because I've already preached on this last week but look at verse 24 of 17 father i desire that they also whom you gave me be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which you have given me wow are you kidding me the revelation of jesus christ to his disciples basically is the means to unity we have unity and it begins with the belief in correct thinking about Jesus and God the Father that is with the doctrine. But listen, but the correct belief, and here's how you know good from bad, the good, the correct belief must bear fruit. You see? Because a life that demonstrates God's love and produces the unity between all the believers, you got to bear fruit. Fruit is what the key is. It's Jesus' fruit in us. It's not hard to do, man. People ask me, Pastor, how, do you, how does it work? It's easy. You let the Holy Spirit in, you knock, knock, and He comes in. You let Him work, and that's all you have to do. It's simple. Simple. Okay? It's that simple. And the glory belongs to Jesus, not a man. So the revelation of Jesus Christ is unity. We have unity. It's God's love. It's, it's, it's His love. And it produces unity between all the believers. Okay? It's a mutual indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Unity, man. The Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, He lives in us. We have unity with the Lord. Wow, I'm just, I just chew on that, man. It's just so amazing how much He loves you. No, we don't need to be condemned. Satan does it enough. We live in a condemned world. Amen? But Romans chapter 8 says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And if you're in Christ, you don't got to be condemned. Praise the Lord, man. Wow. I go to work, man, and I have my job, and I, I see people that are just so upset. Bewildered. And I pray for them. 
And I know God hears me. But listen to this. We're going to get into 18 now. You're probably thinking, man, when are we going to get into 18? We're going to get into it right now. You guys ready? I'm sorry, man. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you were arrested in Gethsemane. Listen, chapter 18 of John talks about when Jesus had spoke these words. He went out with his disciples over the brook of Kidron. Okay, the valley of Kidron is right there on the Mount Olives. And if you're on top here, man, I've been, it's, it's here. You know, it's radical. You have the cemetery, the Jewish cemetery here, but you have Mount Kidron, the brook. It's, it, it, it drops right down below the garden right there. So you're going to see it, man. If you come to Israel, it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's all here. <laughs> I'm excited because I, I seen it. You know, you get these people in the, in the street corners you witness to, and they're like, yeah, I don't want to talk about Jesus. He's just in a book. Dude, in a book? You need to come to Israel, man. <laughs> Jesus comes alive in Israel. <laughs> There's evidence, man. So all you non-believers or scientists, look, take your brush pans and all that and come over here and excavate. Come to Israel and excavate. Listen, Israel opens your eyes to the truth. The Valley of Kudro, Kidron right there, it's right there. It's right by, it's, it's all together, man. It's, you got to come, you got to check it out. Anyways, there, there, was a, there was a garden, and the garden's there by the church. And, and he went, listen, and he and his disciples entered, right? Now listen, because this, remember Judas, chapter, in verse 2, and Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. Oh, of course he knew. Come, come on. <laughs> He's a rat. <laughs> He's a rat. He's a snitch. He knew. He wanted the money. And what is everybody's motives today? It's money. It's money. How can I get ahead? How can I step on you to get ahead? Listen, take money out of the equation and guess what you have? Nothing. It's either that or the barter system. I'll trade you a loaf of bread for some chickens. That's just the way it used to be, man. Back in the days. But we had the money system. But take the money out. Take the money out. Then you have pride. Yeah? Look at the pride here. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. Judas knew, but he wanted the money. He betrayed him. But it was supposed to happen. God allows things to happen in your life. Listen, believers, believe this. I've been there. I've dealt with so many people who think that they're believers, and I have patience because God has given me those patience. To let them do bad things to me. But God will protect me. Because he told me, Joseph, if anyone tries to hurt you, I'll take, I'll, I will take care of them. Amen. God forbid. But God has used me in many ways in this world for people to take advantage of me. And I think, why do they do this to me, Lord? And God says, Joseph, it's not you. I'm showing them that on judgment day, it's going to be harsh on them if they don't repent. God allows certain things to happen to certain people for certain events. I don't know why. But he, isn't gonna, he hasn't left you. And he's not going to give you no more than you can, can't handle. Amen? Amen. So listen. It had to happen. A Judas, who betrayed Jesus, he knew the place. Listen to this. In, in, in verse 2. Judas... Okay, but let's let's talk let's talk about Judas. He was a betrayer. But listen to this, because Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. It was by it was right there by the brook of Kid, Kidron. See, Kidron's a ravine between Jerusalem and the Mount Olives. Okay, all right. So, but listen. So he's it, it, it's right there, and it's a garden. So here we see his. Listen to this, and two for Jesus also knew. Listen, he betrayed him. He also knew the place for Jesus. Okay, let me start on verse 2. And, G- and Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus uh, um, of tent met, met there with his disciples. Okay, then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priest, that's about 600 men, okay, and the Pharisees came. You know them Pharisees. Oh, here comes a good doer at work. You know the Christian. <laughs> you know, he at work trying to preach the gospel. And the officers from the chief priests and Pharisees came. Now listen, there with the lanterns, torches, and weapons, Jesus therefore knowing all things that would come upon him, he went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? 
Wow. Here comes the battalion. Here comes the leaders. Here comes the cops. Here comes the Pharisees and the hypocrites. You got to have them with you. Always have them. The snitches are there. The the the, the cops are there. Uh, you know, it's it, man. They're all there, man. And you may get offended by the word snitch, but listen, my mother taught me as a kid, man, keep your mouth shut and let God work. It really, God knows how to work. You never have to tell on anybody. God works. It's amazing. But Jesus is there. They're coming with the torches, like that Shrek movie. They got their torches. They got, here they come, man. Man, they're going to crucify him. Listen, weapons, torches, weapons and torches. Wow, amazing. Weapons and torches. That's how we feel like today for some of us, but just preaching the gospels. I went to the Walmart the other day and started preaching a little bit to people in the aisle. And the, man, I, I, I had weapons and torches coming at me. I was like, whoa, wait a minute, man. I just wanted a can of beans, some tortillas, man, and some cheese. I, I don't want no trouble, man. The guy said, your shirt's nice, says Jesus on your, you know, on your shirt. Wow. One person came, the next person came, the next patient person. We had a little church study in aisle three, man. <laughs> it was radical because, you know, everybody had a piece of food, man. I'm a food guy. I had, I had beans, he had tortillas, we had rice, man. We, you know, man, that's what it's about. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm, I hope I don't get off subject. But the manager came and said, you guys can't do that here, man. You say to church, it's a store. And I said, dude, we're just talking about the Lord. Listen, Pitchforks, torches, and and, and, and and nasty weapons in their words. They're not going to hurt us. I told the guy, listen to me. I will speak the word of Jesus anywhere because I love him. Hey, you guys, don't be leaving. We're strangers, but we're united. Listen. And I started preaching about this gospel here that I just taught on last week. We're united in Walmart. Walmart, we stand. I'm just kidding, man. Not Walmart, we stand. It's Jesus, we stand. I said, listen. The guy's name was uh, Keon, man. He's a nice guy, man. It's another brother who sings all day long in, in, in Walmart. It's a beautiful thing. Listen, we're united. And we need to be united. And Jesus is going to die for us. And they may be lynching him right now, but he's going to live forever. And remember this, we're going to be together forever. So we might as well get used to each other, whether it be Walmart, church, uh, you know, the park. But we got to be united. We cannot be divided. Satan wants to divide us. Here comes the enemy. Only God ordained this. God allowed God allowed Judas to betray Jesus because Jews the uh, Jews did not kill Jesus. Our sins did. Jews are good people. The Jewish state of Israel is a good country. Israel is a very good, very good country. Israel is radically changing the world through medicine and technology and healings and sharing the, and, and the racist people say oh no that can't be you know they don't want no man we share jews share medicine with the world and technology how do you think you got polio shots man yeah you'd be walking around with polio if it wasn't for the jewish nation listen israel is a very beautiful nation who loves the world they just want peace they didn't kill Jesus. And I get tired of hearing that. Jew, there comes the Jews. They killed Jesus. No, you killed them with your nasty sins and your selfish pride and your money that you want to step on people to get the next deal. You did it. Repent. You did it by being a rotten pastor, whoever you are. I don't know who you are. You do. Who do it for your selfish desires. And collect money from people who and and not give accountability of who who you are and what you are. You you know who you are. I I don't. And and the inmates and the offenders in prison right now who are listening to this message, hey, Jesus loves you. You may have made a mistake, but you're a self soldier and you're gonna live forever and you don't know if you're gonna get out. Jesus was arrested. He got out. Jesus is getting arrested. He's gonna get out. We are free, man. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I'm tired of hearing the drama. Jesus says there is no drama with me. 
Come to me, all you who thirst. Remember the woman at the well. She was thirsty. And we preached on that. And she was thirsty. And Jesus said, are you thirsty, woman? She said, yes, but I can't drink that water. Are you from? He said, listen, I'm going to give you water of living, the real water. The water will you'll never thirst again. Listen, you can go around. I don't care who you are. You can hang out with your, your friends. You're from your dirty past. Your nasty friends. Your neighbors that you don't. Worldly friends. You can go back to the vomit. Go ahead. It's not going to get you anywhere. You're going to. I used to have a dog. We called him Tipsy. You know, my friend was a pastor. He passed away in a car accident. God forbid. But he did. He's with heaven. He's in heaven with Jesus. And he had a dog named Tipsy, man. He was Pentecostal. I mean, I'm not Pentecostal. I hope you know I don't sound Pentecostal. I love Pentecostals. Nothing wrong with Pentecostals. I love the Pentecostal church. I think everybody needs to be more Pentecostal. But. We had a dog named Tipsy, man, and, and, and Jason had the dog Tipsy. And he'd say, Tipsy, get your tail, get your tail. This dog would get his tail all day. If that's what you're doing, you're getting your tail. When you go back to your sin, you're getting your tail. You're chasing your tail. You're chasing your tail. I just want to drink one more beer. Just one beer. Oh, it leads to another. Keep chasing your tail. Just a little bit more. Go ahead, Tipsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. However, listen. Hey, you know, verse 4 says, Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? He knew all things. Knowing he was about to be arrested, he could have escaped, but he didn't. He submitted himself voluntarily to order that was, listen, the or, the whole because the whole, whole ordeal was ordained by God and it was supposed to happen. God ordained this day. And he's telling you today, he loves you. Listen, I'm not going to finish this chapter. I'm not even going to get to verse 6 or 7. Seems like it's just praise the Lord Jesus on this one. Recap. And in the beginning of, hey, listen, Jesus Christ loves you. I want to tell you this. Listen, it was ordained. It was ordained that he got arrested. And guess what? Guess what? Jesus Christ has ordained you. Listen to me right now, wherever you are. I want you to listen to this. We're almost finished with this sermon. I'd love to go all day, but the Holy Spirit, man, I can't. You can't control the Holy Spirit, but people's tension spans ain't ain't, ain't, ain't like ain't like mine, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. A lot of people can't. You know what? Maybe it's because I preach, but Jesus is in love with you. Listen to this. He knew all things. He could have said, "I give up. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to escape. I'm going to escape. I'm going to leave." Nope. Nope, he didn't chicken out on you. Jesus Christ did not chicken out on you. He could have bailed on you. He could have quit on us. Jesus isn't a quitter. Are you a quitter? Jesus isn't a quitter. That's the message. The message today is called, are you a quitter? Jesus never quit on you. Jesus never stopped. He could have. He could have just went poof and turned them all into donuts or whatever he wanted to. Man, oh, why did I say donuts? I think I'm hungry. No, listen. He could have did whatever he wanted to. Man, he could have made the swords stab each other. He didn't. He didn't. He had mercy. He had mercy. He knew all things. He could have escaped, but he did not. Why? Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. He wants us to love him. Listen. And Judas has, listen to this. You know, Judas is behind him with the finger pointing. It's all ordained by God. Well, listen. Verse 5 says, They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. Wow. And Judas who betrayed him also stood with him. <laughs> You know. Now when he said to them, I am he, listen, they drew back and they fell to the ground. Wow, like a like 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 the, like a Jedi. And they asked him again, Who are you see? He said, Who are you? And listen to this, man, this is crazy. And we're gonna end with this. And we're gonna end with this. They they wanted Jesus of Nazareth, and Jesus said to them, I am he, and Judas who betrayed him also stood with them. Now when he said this to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again to Jesus. Jesus said this, listen, 
This is crazy, man. Here it goes. Who are you? Who are you seeking? Wow. And they said to Jesus of Nazareth. And they said to Jesus, listen to this. Verse 8. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. And the same might be fulfilled, which he had spoke of whom? Of those who you gave me, I have lost none. Wow. Wow. He was being arrested. He demonstrated that he's taken the bullet. He's taken everything for us. He showed his apostles. I'm going to go down for you. Here it is. I'm going to die for you guys. Continue. Don't stop. Continue. Be about my business. I'm going to die for you. I love you guys. I'm getting arrested. I'm here for you. Take me. They arrested him. Next week we're going to talk about the arrest. But listen to this. They arrested him. They arrested him good. And listen to this. You're going to trip out on this. Are you guys ready for this? And Jesus, listen to this. Okay? Can't even imagine this. Here we go. You ready? Listen to this. He lost none. He's, listen, he's lost none. He fulfilled what he spoke about. In verse 8, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those who you gave me, I have lost none. Listen, and we're almost done. In verse 10 says, And Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it out and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. <laughs> Listen, this is radical, man. My favorite part. The servant's, ready for this? The servant's name was Malchus, okay? And verse 11 says, So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheath, man. <laughs> he didn't say man, but he said, <clears throat> Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? <laughs> Next week we're going to talk about this, man. God bless you guys. I can't go on, man. We're almost done. We're running out of time. The ears cut off. Jesus is going to put it back on soon. He's saying, you know what, man? I got a plan for you, man. If you lost your right ear, <laughs> if your ear got cut off, listen, Jesus is saying he's going to put it back on so you can hear his word. This is what we're going to talk about next week. Hearing his word, man. Hearing his word. Why? Growing in his word. Hearing his word. The ear may be cut off. Jesus sets the mark that he doesn't want violence. That he is not for violence. He's of love. Jesus Christ does not love violence. He loves everybody. He died for us. He just showed it. He just took a bullet for us. He got arrested. He's got arrested for you. He's, they're going to beat him, whip him, crucify him. Things are going to just go amazing. Peter is going to get taught a lesson. The love of Christ is going to go into this, uh, you know, into this man's, you know, when he heals this soldier, this Roman soldier, he's going to get healed. You know, the, you know, the high priest, we're going to see the priest coming up soon, man. And, and Jesus loves you guys. Listen, man, I'm excited. We're getting onto this. It's amazing. Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. We just thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. That you died for us, Lord. That you're going to die. Wow, the whole, this is amazing, Lord. Because we suck. Father, we, we can't get it together. We're sinners. And we know by your grace and by your mercy and by your blood alone purges and cleanses us from our nasty sins, Father. We grow every day, Father, in your word. But we know that you're in control of our situation. Lord, I pray for all the believers right now who are being persecuted. I pray for uh, the beautiful country Mexico, Father, right now. Lord, I, I pray for uh, the ministry over in Mexico right now that's going on, that we that, that you're doing there, Father. I pray for, Lord, just the world right now, Father. I pray for Israel, Lord, and just I pray for the believers listening to this word today that they come, Father, and just know who you are, Jesus. It's about growing in his word, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. And you guys, thanks for coming to Growing In His Word. If you log on to growinginhisword.com, there you'll find out that we're on every podcast. You know, we're, we, we're, we're going strong. We're aiming for, for Growing In His Word. Growing In His Word was made for believers like you. Growing In His Word was made to teach the Bible verse by verse and let the Holy Spirit lead without any pride and without any, any bitterness.
this. It's about His love. Truly it is. We're all called together for one thing, and that's to build up the kingdom and love others. <sighs> Amazing. Growing in His Word loves you. God bless.